Hi everyone, so today we have a second analysis for the 2018 midterms. So obviously the midterms are coming up pretty, pretty sh um, soon, about 150 days. Um, I don't have the countdown there, but uh, it's around that, so it's but around that. So this will be an analysis video, but I will start off with just going through the states, I'm just going to put it in safe and toss up. Um, Maisie Hirono in Hawaii going to win her seat. Um, New Mexico, I'll come back to that one. Um, actually, we'll fill in the Republican states first. So Utah, Wyoming, Nebraska, and Mississippi. And then now we'll go ahead and fill in the Democratic seats. So Washington, California, Hawaii. Um, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, Vermont. Um, yeah, you could call Minnesota. Um, I'll come back to that one. Um, so this is just kind of the bare minimum. So now we're just going to go into safe, likely leaning and toss up because, you know, this is really not very realistic. Mississippi special election likely to go to Cindy Hyde-Smith. I can't see Mike Espy um, taking that seat away from the GOP. Um, going over to the state of New Mexico, again, Martin Heinrich probably going to hold on. I think this would be probably safe for him. Um, over in Virginia, again, um, no prominent GOP front runner and the... Um, Virginia primary is very, very contested. That's not good for the for the Republicans. Tim Kaine probably going to hold on. Um, in New Jersey, I think that um, Bob Menendez will hold on to this seat. Um, you could say it would be safe. Over up in Maine, Angus King, uh, again, likely to hold on to this one. The Republican nominee is a state senator, not necessarily the best candidate for the GOP. Um, what, we're going to go now, uh, going over to the state of West Virginia. Um, this is going to, the the GOP wants to take this state away from Joe Manchin. I'm not seeing it. I think that Joe Manchin will narrowly edge this one out likely for him. Um, Patrick Morrissey, not necessarily the best one. I think that the Republicans should have nominated Evan Jenkins, um, but Patrick Morrissey, not necessarily the best one. Um, and the fact that in the primary, um, there was so much turnout for Joe Manchin, it's pretty much going to go to him regardless. Um, over in Pennsylvania... Again, probably going to go to Bob Casey. Trump's approval rating not necessarily going to help Lou Barletta in the state. Um, over in neighbouring Ohio, again, probably going to go to Sherrod Brown. I can't see Jim Renassi taking that seat. Um, over up in Michigan, Debbie Stab now. She will hold on to that seat. I am sure of it. Um, going over to neighbouring Wisconsin, Tammy Baldwin likely to hold on to her seat. That, that there's no good GOP front runner in this state. Um, over up to Minnesota, I think that Minnesota at large would definitely go to Amy Klobuchar, and the special election likely to go to Tina Smith. Um, we're going to come back to North Dakota. We're going to come back to Montana. Um, over in the state of Nevada, we'll come back to Arizona. We'll come back to. Texas will come back to, Florida will come back to, Tennessee. This is going to be a hotly contested race right here. However, because of my, because Tennessee is such a Republican state, Marsha Blackburn is going to appeal to that conservative base. Phil Bredesen, I, I know he's popular, but I think that Marsha Blackburn, would, with a leaning, would hold on to... Um, would narrowly edge this one out. Um, over up in Indiana, Mike Braun, yeah, he's okay. Um, but again, with the Democratic wave painted, I think that Joe Donnelly will, uh, will edge this one out. 
um, especially considering he's the incumbent. Um, up in Montana, there are no good GOP front runners, um, and the fact that Montana is such a dispersed, dispersed state is probably going to help John Tester. Uh, I think that it is likely for him to hold on to this one. Texas, we will come back to. Down in Florida, Rick Scott only narrowly edged by both of his elections. In 2014, he narrowly edged out his election, but this was in a Republican way year. It should have been much, much better for Rick Scott. Um, and the fact that Bill Nelson, a mildly popular Florida senator, uh, he will be spiked up by the incumbency factor. Uh, so I think that Bill Nelson will edge this one out over the Republican Rick Scott. Um, going over to Missouri, there's been a lot of developments in Missouri lately. The um, governor, I believe, of Missouri just stepped down, um, which is probably going to help Claire McCaskill. I mean, Josh Hawley is very closely tied to Ms. the Missouri governor, um, probably going to go to Claire McCaskill. Uh, because of that um, fact, I think that this seat is leaning for Claire McCaskill. So now it's 48 to 48, and the last four states is where we're going to have real uh, substance um, that we're going to be talking about, not just like going through them pretty quickly. Uh, so Texas and Arizona and Nevada and North Dakota, I consider pure toss-ups. Uh, so we're going to go through them one by one. We will start off with the ones that have Republican incumbents, um, three of the four, Texas, Arizona, and Nevada, and then we'll go on to North Dakota. So we're going to start off with the state of Texas. Um, <clears throat> the state of Texas is becoming progressively more democratic. Um, it's it went it Texas went more more people in Texas voted for Hillary Clinton than people in Iowa did. More um. Hillary Clinton, sorry, Donald Trump won um, Iowa more than he won the state of Texas, and that shows something that Texas is becoming much more, much more democratic, um, especially with all the minorities coming in, um, and that's the first reason. Um, a second thing is kind of helping Ted Cruz the incumbent factor. He has his name recognition all across the state. Uh, everyone already knows Ted Cruz, mostly, um, and I think he would do very well in the northern part of the state, uh, exceedingly well, actually, in the northern part of the state. Um, but the last thing for um, is the last thing that we're going to talk about for Peter O'Rourke. He is going to every single uh, county in Texas just to try and get his name out. Um and already in one poll there, there was two polls so far have been conducted. One of them is more um, uh, verified and it only has Beto O'Rourke down by three points. And um, that was back um, a couple weeks ago. So now that he's gone to even more of the counties, um, it's probably just going to be very, very close. And the final reason in Texas is that time after time after time after time again, we have seen that the um, more more kind of like, um, how, how should I say it? The other candidate will always defeat the establishment. Donald Trump defeated Hillary Clinton. Bernie Sanders came very, very close to defeating Hillary Clinton in the primaries. Um, there are so, so many other examples um, of, of this trend that the establishment normally gets beaten down. Bido O'Rourke is not taking money from the super PACs, and that's probably going to help him with Texas. For those reasons, it's going to be so, so close in the state of Texas. It'll, it's going to be a coin flip. Right now, it is a pure toss-up. Going over to the state of Arizona, the G this does not need much um, 
much reason because Kristen Cinema already pretty much well known across the state and especially in her congressional district, the ninth congressional district. Um, and also the very, very tough fight going on in the primaries for the GOP. Gonna um, go to a divided party. Not necessarily the best thing. I think Kristen Cinema will edge this one out, especially considering the minorities are making up a bigger and bigger part of the electorate in the state of Arizona. Going up to Nevada, um, Dean Heller is a very, very unpopular uh, incumbent, um, and he's not necessarily liked by the GOP. Jackie Rosen already very much liked by the Democratic Party. And again, many minorities coming into this area of the country. Jackie Rosen, I think, is leaning to win in the likely or leaning to win in the state of Nevada. And going all the way up to the state of North Dakota, um, Heidi Heitkamp is a conservative Democrat, but uh, caucus is pretty much 50-50. Kevin Kramer already a conservative known record. I think that North Dakota will go to the Republicans just because Trump won it by about 25 points. And I think that even though this is a Dem wave year, I think that there is enough of the Trump voting base to push Kevin Kramer over the top because the Democrats will go to Heidi Heitkamp. The Independent, which make up probably like... 20% of the electorate in North Dakota. So Heidi Heitkamp wins them. Maybe she wins 18%. Okay, now it's 18 to 2. Now we're going to look at independents. Maybe they make up about 30% of the electorate. Heidi Heitkamp probably going to win them probably around 60-40. So if we're looking at 60-40, now that means that... Um, Heidi Heitkamp is still winning. However, when you look at more than half of the electorate in North Dakota would be conservative, and they would overwhelmingly go to Kevin Kramer. And he already is known across the state. He is the representative for North Dakota in the House of Representatives. For those reasons, I think Kevin Kramer will edge out the ground game in the state of North Dakota. Now, the final state to decide the election is this it to decide the balance of power is the state of Texas. This is going to be an extremely hard-fought battleground state. Um, just because Ted Cruz has the incumbency, I will lean this in the favour of the Republicans. However, it's going to be so, so close in the state of Texas. Um, it will be all night long. People will be watching the state of Texas. So the final electoral map, um, the Democrats lose the Senate, um, the, however, you have to factor in that um, people like Suzanne Collins of Maine and Lisa Murkowski of Alaska often not necessarily best friends with Trump, so they might kind of shift towards the Democrats in a sense, however, it's still the advantage is with the Republicans. Um, so North Dakota flipped. The, the only flips, actually, were the state of Nevada, uh, the state of Arizona, and the state of North Dakota. So um, right now it's 49-51. So Nevada makes it 50-50. Arizona makes it 51-49 in favour of the Democrats. And North Dakota balances it out at 50-50. But because of Mike Pence it would mean that the Republicans would gain control, or it will, would stay in control, rather, in the United States Senate. Now, now that we've done the prediction part, we're going to go into the analysis. And um, the analysis today will be basically how the Democrats could theoretically win back the Senate, and then we'll go into how the Republicans could win back the Senate. So we're just going to go into... Um, we can go into Cook Political... That's okay. Um, inside elections, maybe. Yeah, that's probably better. Um, Texas, I disagree with this. I think that it's only, it should be a pure toss-up, the state of Texas. Um, but I don't, I don't think any of these are pretty good. Um, but going, but looking at 
let's say Sebasto, Sebato Crystal Ball. Um, Texas would be a pure toss-up. Um, going over to West Virginia, this is likely for the Democrats. Same thing in Ohio, likely for them. Um, Sherrod Brown, pretty popular. Um, so I'm just going through and making some changes to this map. Um, down in Florida, I think that Bill Nelson will win this seat pretty easily. Um, so we're just going to go through this. Um, Joe Donnelly going to win his seat. Um, Missouri, Clay McCaskill, North Dakota, Arizona, and no, actually we're just going to go into a blank map. So going into safe and toss up, Washington, California, Hawaii. This is how the Democrats could theoretically gain control of the Senate. So just for the sake of argument, I'm going to take out all the Republican seats. And for the Democrats to win, they need to hold all the seats they have right now. So that is West Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, Wisconsin, Missouri, uh, Tennessee will come back to Florida, um, Arizona, Nevada, Nor Montana, North Dakota, and, oh, sorry, those two are not. So we have 49 Democrats and um, 42 Republicans, obviously. So how the Democrats need to win? Step one, they need to get all, this, all the states that they right now have incumbents in. The next step is to allocate the red states, so Wyoming, um, Nebraska, uh, sorry, Mississippi, Nebraska, Wyoming, and Utah. These are unlikely for Democratic pickups. Even Mississippi special election, most Democrats say, no, we're probably not going to win in the Mississippi special election. So now we have four more states to for the Democrats. So if they won all four, Tennessee with Phil Bredesen, Texas with Beto O'Rourke, Arizona with Kristen Sinema and Nevada with Jackie Rosen. That would be a pretty, pretty solid win for the Democrats. 53 Democrats, 47 Republicans. So how the Democrats need to win? Most Democrats, unlike my predictions, say, no, Ted Cruz will win. I think that Beto O'Rourke definitely has a shot at winning the state of Texas, but most Democrats don't think so. Uh, most Democrats think they're in play in Tennessee. Phil Bredesen, a very popular um, former Tennessee governor. Um, in the polls, he's already performing ahead of Marsha Blackburn. They need to win Tennessee to win control of the Senate by a hefty margin. If they lose Tennessee, but they, hold, but they pick up Arizona and Nevada, um, it would be 51-49. But to really kind of stop Trump legislation, if you will. They would need to pick up the state of Tennessee, giving them 52 seats. The best realistic scenario is 53-47. And the best kind of unrealistic scenario would be probably 55-45. But this will not happen, trust me. This will not happen. The best realistic scenario is 53-47. The best kind of more realistic scenario, if you will, is probably 51 or 52 to 48 or 49, depending on if you give Tennessee to the Republicans or Democrats. Now let's go over the Republicans' um, side of things. So we'll just go into that. Um, first of all, they obviously need to hold all the states they have incumbents in right now. They need to hold Mississippi, Mississippi Special, Texas, Nebraska, Wyoming, and Utah. Uh, what they also need to do, the GOP has a couple options, much more options than the Democrats do. Most GOP people think Wisconsin not going to go their way. Ohio probably also not necessarily going to be the best for them. Um, so now we're at 48 to 43. Where can the GOP, what, what does the GOP think that they can do? They think... Okay, no, we can we can win the state of Indiana. We can Mike Braun, he can win the state of Indiana. Mike Pence, he'll really push push us push up push us up up in the state. Let's say let's give the Republicans the state of Indiana. Let's give them North Dakota. That is a state that um, ha has been targeted 
by both political parties. However, some Democrats are starting to think hmm, maybe Heidi Heitkamp won't hold on to the, her seat. Even just those two states give the Republicans the majority. You can give the Democrats every single other state, which is not likely to happen in their best case scenario. Um, West Virginia and Florida. So, which is not even likely to happen. So the, Dem the Republicans are far more in play than the Democrats are. But the Republicans, let's take out all the states I currently gave them. Um, many Republicans now think Dean Heller probably not going to hold on. So even in their best case scenario, I think Jackie Rosen will um, make, this, make this a gain for the Democrats. But the Republicans, they have opportunities to gain in states that Donald Trump won by double digits. States like Montana, North Dakota, Indiana, West Virginia, Tennessee, Missouri, and then states he won by less, Arizona, and the state of Florida. So these states that Trump won by double digits, West Virginia, Tennessee, Missouri, and Montana, let's say that they all go to the Republicans. So give Tennessee Republican and West Virginia Republican. That would be a very um, interesting map. And then even you could go further still, Arizona, Nevada, and the state of Florida could all go to the Republicans. You could eat some Republicans now even saying, you know, we're not out of plan, Ohio. We're not out of play in Pennsylvania. We're not out of play in Wisconsin. We're not out of play in the Mississippi special election, but this is definitely not likely to happen. Um, all these states, I believe, would go to the Democrats at the end of the day. Uh, Florida, I believe, would go to the Democrats. Um, Nevada, I believe, would go to the Democrats. Arizona would go to the Democrats, but this is the best realistic case if you swap Arizona, uh, Florida, Arizona, and Nevada, the best realistic scenario would be 57-43. So that's not necessarily good news. And then if you go on to the 2019 Senate, it would look like this. Not that many purple states, um, only Nevada and Colorado and um, Alabama. That's a bit, well, we know what happened there. Uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin are the only states with different, um, se sorry, the only states with two senators from different parties. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so if you look there, um, that would be the best case for the, Senate, for the Republicans, 51 to 57. That would be pretty interesting if that happens. But um, most people say, no, it's not going to happen like that. So, but... Basically, the analysis would be that the Republicans have many more opportunities to gain seats than the Democrats, especially in those districts, uh, sorry, in those states that Donald Trump won by double digit states like Montana, North Dakota, Missouri, Tennessee, West Virginia, Indiana, many, many states that, that the GOP is looking for pickups in those states that Trump won by double digits, um, but, yeah, so it's, anyway, that kind of concludes my analysis of this video, um, thank you guys for watching this video, comment down suggestions below, and I'll see you all in the next one.